If you were to appear on the famous television show Jeopardy, and the category was Apostles, you may have Alex Trebek announce this. The answer is, he was number 14. The response would be, who was St. Paul the Apostle? 14 men have received the rare and important title of Apostle of Jesus Christ. The original 12 included Judas. St. Matthias, who replaced Judas, was number 13. And finally, the man himself, St. Paul. Hello, my name is Father Mark Hoffman, and today we're highlighting the seventh window in our video series, A Walk Through the Windows of Our Lady of Peace Church. Today features a window simply entitled St. Paul. To introduce this window, let's do a quick review of who the man, St. Paul the Apostle, really is. While we have no birth date for him, Paul offered his life for Jesus Christ as a martyr around the year 67 AD. While each apostle seems to center his vocation on a particular group that they served, Paul is best known as the Apostle to the Gentiles. Gentiles are those who did not have the benefit of being raised in the Jewish faith. These were commonly called pagans or perhaps did not have any belief system. Today, we might call them the nuns, reflecting that they had no religious affiliation. He was born in the ancient city of Tarsus, Cilicia, Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. His family was the, of the ancestors of the Jewish tribe of Benjamin. A Roman citizen, originally called Saul, he was raised a Pharisee, the most strict of the Jewish groupings of the period. By profession, he was a tent maker, an occupation he used later on in life as he traveled the Roman Empire. He studied the Jewish law as well as Greek and Latin languages and cultures. Paul was later sent to Jerusalem who studied under the famous rabbi Gamaliel, where he mastered the Torah. Saul became a dedicated opponent of the new and early church and was actually present at the martyrdom of the young Saint Stephen, urging those who were stoning him to death. Setting out for Damascus to carry on the persecution of Christians in that area, he underwent a renowned conversion as noted in the Acts of the Apostles chapter nine. Eventually, he chose to meet Peter and the other apostles in Jerusalem, returning to preach near his own home area and set out on several journeys. He worked very hard to remove anything which did not welcome Gentiles into the Christian community. Paul was one of the most imaginative, eloquent, and passionate writers in all of Christian history. The window dedicated to this great saint features the head of St. Paul. His face is confident, that of a man who is unafraid to preach the truth. Architecturally, it seems to parallel the face of Isaiah from window number four. Both were unlikely and humble about their early call to serve God. But once each man's vocation took off, they took their mission by storm. Beneath his face are the traditional images of this strong, saintly man, a sword and a book. St. Paul was decapitated with a sword by the Romans Thus, the sword is the symbol of the instrument of his death. In tradition, this sword is often referred to as Spiritus Gladius, the sword of the spirit. Paul did not mince words when he wanted to make a strong point. The book represents his teachings and specifically his letters written to the Christian communities he started and nurtured at a distance with his advice, correction, and love. Below his face, sword, and book, we find two interesting symbols, a shield and a cord. The shield of faith and the cincture or cord of truth are from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Here is what he said. Finally, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the power of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. 
For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything, to hold your ground. So stand fast with your loins girded in truth, clothed in righteousness as a breastplate, and your feet shod in readiness for the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, hold faith as a shield to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Paul reminds us that the real battle is not with what we can see or touch, but with what we can't. We Christians are charged to battle with evil itself, so we need to prepare and protect ourselves. This parish church is the place where, through the sacraments, the celebration of the Mass, and catechetical opportunities, we prepare to do battle and live for the truth as God defines it, not as popular society decides. It is interesting that one piece of clothing that Paul describes in this scriptural passage, the helmet of salvation, is missing from the window. Maybe it's done on purpose. After all, we have to bring something to ourselves into this battle. That something is perhaps our dedication and devotion to our Catholic faith. As the saying goes, we have to stand for something or we will fall for anything. Paul is the first of several saints that we will honor in our walk through the windows of Our Lady of Peace. So until next time that we meet, in the words of St. Paul in Ephesians 6, 18, with all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit.